Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a really special episode for you. We're actually going to be sharing my coverage of the WatchBuys.com Roadshow. In particular, this was from 2017, just recently this year, depending on when you watch this. And this is their stop in Southern California. In particular, in Southern California, um, out in Orange County, in the city of Irvine. So, a little bit about Watch Buys. Essentially, they're an authorized dealer for a lot of different brands. Most of them being German, as you'll see here. But there are also a couple of Swiss-made brands. Um, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed with what they're doing. I mean, the pricing they're able to offer... Um, is just really extremely competitive and the selection that they have is really quite top-notch so it's really cool that since considering that you know they're an online vendor that they do these road shows where they can kind of uh, take things on the road and let you get things in hand so you can really see how they fit how they work obviously these aren't the types of watches you can just go pick up um, at Ben Bridge and uh, go try on so I think it's really cool that they're out there and they're making connections and networking um, with their buyers because they are selling direct and they're selling at uh, essentially wholesale prices, which is really great. So essentially you're getting the deals that dealers get. So um, I got to say very impressed with what I saw there and let's move into some of the coverage. Now, I got to say Zinn really surprised me while I was there. It's a brand that I've kind of shied away from in the past just because kind of where the price point is and then the styling, um, you know, it's just a little bit more bare bones and, you know, one of the things when you kind of feel like a real design execution is, you know, when they have those more, you know, fancier details and whatnot. And I got to say, um, I realized that with Zinn, really the appreciation comes in with those fine details. Now, the design of the hands and the dial and everything, those are all still very simplistic and very minimalistic, but uh, it's the execution, uh, the tolerances, the way that the finishing is, the way the pieces fit together, the way they move, the way everything feels on wrist and in the hand. I gotta say, that's really where the Zen shines. So although when you, it, the way these are pictured, they're, you know, they seem very flat. Um, but when you have them in hand, I got to say, they're they're really quite impressive. Another brand that's really great that was there that was featured is Fortis, which I'm a big fan of. Um, here we see a really nice uh, chronograph example. Um, really great proportions, not really feeling oversized, feeling really the right size um, with the right amount of text on the dial. You know, there's a lot of space there to fill, and I think they filled it really nicely. Great tactile feeling on the bezel there. Um, here's another model that I've really been looking forward to getting my hands on. Um, there's actually a limited edition version of this that's a panda dial, um, which I definitely was hoping that they would have. Looks like they didn't. Um, but this one is like a completely loomed dial. Really, really cool. Here we have another model. Um, I feel like it, it kind of is in the vein of the Rolex Explorer um, without looking anything like an Explorer. But it just has that similar aesthetic, I think, um, that can really be an everyday watch. Watch. Now the cool thing about this piece is it's actually, you might have seen my review for a very similar watch from Fortis, the Tycoon Chronograph. Um, it's pretty much the exact same case but just with different hands, um, you know, different dial and a different strap and it really just makes all the difference and I was very impressed and I do like the execution on that one. Here is a particular uh, Flieger watch that I was a huge fan of. I was so glad to finally see this one in the flesh. I love the thin mid case there. I mean, look at how thin that is, and it's all attributed to that really nicely done 2892, super thin, um, really lightweight, and I mean, at about $880, I mean, it's really tough to beat as far as value proposition goes. Now, of course, there were other, you know, Flieger models there, you know, more militaristic designs, um, you know, lots of numerals, great pieces, great design language, I think, that kind of carries across their entire range. You know, um, nothing felt out of place. Everything felt like a Fortis watch. And then just the build quality on the moving parts, again, quite impressive uh, as far as the bezel action here. As you can see, really nice, able to turn with one hand. And, you know, it felt very substantial as well, which was really great. Um, this model here, I've been trying to get my hands on for a while. Uh, really happy to see it there. It kind of has a Daytona-esque 
case there, but then it has almost like a more militaristic uh, kind of man on the moon style dial. And I think the combination is really, really great. Um, so I was really happy to see this in hand um, and, and really get a closer look. Now, some really cool items that you might not know Watch Bice carries are really ornate, really fine crafted you know handmade pieces and as you can see there I mean just no expenses spared just every little detail um, really dressing up these pieces so it was really a cool contrast to many of the very stark and minimalistic designs that they had to have these really great ornate details um, you know special materials and just great color palettes here with that very nice you know, that faded gray alligator strap, the beautiful gold sundial, uh, sorry, subdial for the seconds. I mean, this one was just gorgeous. Um, really beautiful to look at. And then we have fully skeletonized piece here, really, really just done down to every little detail, everything finely crafted. And then we have other pieces, of course, that do tie back to that very Germanic um, military style. Very cool. Here we'll see our first look at Hanhart, a really cool brand that we're, we're going to go back and forth on in this video. Um, really great pieces. I love, again, single design language. Everything there felt like a Hanhart. And I got to say, pictures do not do these watches justice. Um, now on to Young Hands. Really cool to see those in person. I feel like on paper they feel like they're gonna be they're gonna wear a little bit big um, because those dials do push all the way to the edges of the case. You know, there's a very slim bezel there. Uh, but when you start taking into account the height of the domed crystals and uh, the kind of saucer-shaped cases, it really um, I'd say balances out the watches and really makes them feel just more proportional. I know when uh, watches can be very thin and flat, it makes them seem a lot bigger. I think that's one of the cool design features of Young Hands is that they have those cool saucer shaped cases. This is one of their new models, which I was really impressed with and I was glad to see that it didn't seem oversized. Here's this really cool field watch from Zinn. Um, I really enjoyed the patina and that kind of baseball glove leather there, very luxurious. Great solid feel, and it just is something different. And then, of course, it has, you know, the tegumented case, the great, uh, you know, the capsule technology for moisture. And then another model here with the fully tegumented bracelet. I mean, all the bells and whistles, all the technology you're going to pay a little bit extra for with a Zen is going to be available. And I got to say, in hand, very, very impressive. And it's cool to be impressed even with a bead blast finish. Now we got the Primus line. Um, and this was Hanhart's kind of more updated, you know, modern style. And then you see it sitting right next to some of the more classic stuff. And the really cool thing is, is that they all had a really great design language that carried out. Um, but you could tell they were kind of, you know, focused on different periods. Um, another look at Fortis, really great pieces there, great lineup. Back to Hanhart, I really love these chronographs. I think, you know, again, pictures do not do them justice. Really fantastic look. This particular piece, I had a great talk with uh, the guest speaker from Hanhart. I gotta say, great guy, um, amazing information. This piece, just the design, uh, time that went into this. There's so many little fine details. Although, hey, you know, on paper it's just syringe hands, Arabic numerals, you know, um, has the knurled rotating bezel, big crown, but it's more than on paper because when you have it on hand and on wrist, you just realize there's just so many details that they worked on and just really crafted a fine piece. Another quick look at the Young Hands lineup. And then now we're back to some Zen, back to the Zen table, which was definitely the largest attraction there. Here's a piece I've been wanting to get my hands on. It is a Zen Navitimer on this great fine link bracelet. I gotta say, again, really wonderful dimensions on these. The proportions were really nice. 
on paper again there's something where sometimes the dims will make you think okay this is going to be a little tall this is going to be a little wide you know this and that but when you have it in hand you, you really get a great idea of the scale and that's one of the things that these road shows really really um, excel at is, is getting your hands on um, here's the t1 i was really hoping they'd have the t2 which is the smaller model here but it was really nice to kind of get a realistic idea of the colorway and the finishing on it and just the real fit and finish and the quality and it's tough to be impressed by a fit and finish when it's all finished in a matte bead blast but man i gotta say this thing was just so finely executed all titanium really great um, nice lightweight but not uh, tinny feeling it definitely still felt quite substantial and really well balanced so really impressed well done there Here's a really sweet chronograph that has that great old school vibe to it. You know, um, that nice big domed crystal, the great Arabic numerals. I mean, there's just no mistaking this for a beautiful field watch. And of course, functionality was on point. Um, here's a piece that I've been really, I've really had my eye on. The 104 is such a popular watch. You know, I really kind of see it as almost um, as a Submariner alternative. Not a homage in any way, but an alternative in that it just fits that black and steel um, architecture. You know, it, it has it all. It's built extremely well. And, you know, it's definitely a respectable piece, and it's very, very capable. Reminds me a bit of my Hydro Conquest with the H-Link bracelet and the fully uh, numeral dial, but really gorgeous and finely executed. Here's another piece. I really do enjoy the Indice dial there um, on the white dial model. I think that they just uh, really knocked that one out of the park. Um, you know, I've been considering this particular model for a while. Really great proportions, 20 millimeter lugs, 41 millimeter case. Just really, I mean, could be a perfect everyday watch for anybody. Now, I had to pick this one up. I really liked it. I hadn't really seen it or been very interested in this model in the past. But I got to say the scale was really nice. And it had this wonderful, sporty, militaristic design. It really reminded me of kind of Porsche design. And then we had this great you know, to no case, that barrel shape, really nice, cool inner slide bezel there. Um, I'm not even sure what kind of scale that was, but, you know, again, really impressive. Even in the matte finish, you could just tell that everything was really done quite fine. Uh, here we have a little lineup of chronographs that I just thought were the perfect proportions. Um, really great and it's nice to see the contrast here we have the very militaristic and sporty model and then we have pretty much the same watch but small tweaks and changes in the finishing and the dial the strap choice and all of a sudden you have a piece that's so much more dressy and uh, it just even that more versatile to where you can dress it up you can dress it down and it still has that great Zen design language and then of course all the great tactile feeling there in operation so really really nice from that standpoint here we go a little reveal at the end there is my new 556 ib compared to the arabic numerals model really gorgeous i was really impressed with the h links on this one and the clasp just an extremely capable piece really tough to find something that can compete with that honestly um that's out there so really awesome piece maybe i'll still uh, get that variant um, if you guys like the video please do hit like and if you haven't already do subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys bye